Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And finally, nearly 24 hours later, kind of interesting, I-24 News, International Middle East, is reporting the story we, re we reported to you yesterday. In fact, it came out at 12.10 p.m. Uh, today on October the 26th. They reported about the Iraqi Shia para paramilitaries threatened revenge against Israel, U.S. after the deadly blaze. And of course, that... That deadly blaze they're talking about is the attack that we reported to you yesterday from uh, Masin, Iraq, where the uh, head of one of the militias there uh, was killed. And of course, we were wondering whether or not ISIS was behind it. And I think, in fact, on our YouTube channel, that's kind of the way we, we, we spoke about that. Let me just pull that up for you real quick here. Um, Ah, uh, let's see. Well, gosh, what channel am I on here? It doesn't look like I'm, I'm on Israeli News Live. What am I looking at here real quick? Let's just take a quick look at this, though, just so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm speaking about um, on our channel right here. Here we go right here. Uh, did ISIL strike again in the uh, Mas uh, Masin province in Iraq? This was what we put out uh, yesterday, uh, oh, October the 25th, 2019. And, of course, we are talking about this attack uh, that happened, uh, what we consider to be possibly Daesh. Uh, my source did say that yesterday's attack to the base of anti-Daesh mil uh, militia, where the provincial leaders were assassinated, he gets injured in the attack when the ambulance tries to transfer him to the hospital. The ambulance is attacked and uh, he dies. His name was Vasim uh, Al Alai Lavi. And the pictures are attached. You sent me actually pictures of this event uh, that we reported yesterday. Now, we were unsure whether or not ISIS was behind it. But what's interesting is I-24 News coming out the very next day. They're reporting it. And the Iraqi Shia parliamentaries, par uh, paramilitaries threaten revenge against Israel and the U.S. after the deadly blaze. But we know now that it was ISIL that was behind this attack. All right. This is the coffin of the man that was killed there. And of course, he was the commander uh, of that uh, particular uh, brigade there. His name, again, Visam Ali, Ali Lavi. They also report his name in this article here. I actually had, I looked at the time I received it myself from my own source there. Uh, here it is right here. They, they pronounce it with some because uh, I'm getting it in a little bit different. Uh, well, it's transliterated, so it depends on who transliterates it. With some al al Yawai was later pronounced dead by the group after footage circulated online showing him uh, wreathing in an ambulance as a crowd of men tried to break into it. Uh, so this is, from what it looks like now, it was a Daesh, uh, anti Daesh militia. That, or excuse me, I'm sorry, yesterday's attack to the base of the anti-Daesh militia where the provincial leaders was assassinated. Um, so maybe I'm mistaken on this, whether or not it was an ISIS attack or not. But nonetheless, I-24 News is saying that uh, the Shiite uh, group there is blaming the United States and Israel for this attack. Now, that also coincides with the intelligence that we were sharing already that the United States was involved in helping... Uh, with Turkey and even Israel, uh, moving ISIS back into Iraq to destabilize this nation because there is a lot of issues going on in that. We really need to go deeper into this whole subject, but I've really been engrossed in this investigation that I'm working on. By the way, this was his, uh, this was uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Ali Lavi, this was his home that was attacked where he was wounded at. Uh, the picture that was sent to me about that. And then, of course, this was the ambulance right here uh, that he was being carried to the hospital in. And then that van was attacked and torched. Uh, they tried to rescue the man, but was unable to get him out, and he burned to death in that van there. Uh, so it certainly appears, in my way of thinking, ISIS is alive and well. And, uh, and, 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 and of course, they're getting some help according to our source there, uh, and of course, not just our own source, but we've got other information on that, that the United States uh, certainly opened the door for Turkey to come in, attack, 
the Kurds, free the ISIL prisoners, ISIS prisoners there, uh, allow them back into Iraq. And of course, the whole purpose is, is to try to retake control of the Iraqi government. Uh, they seem to have lost it, and we've been showing you some of the things that have been happening over there. Very, very serious situation there inside the country there. Also, too, uh, this here, uh, despite the pseudo ceasefire that satisfies the American clown, NATO uh, Trump and its jihadists continue to, to bomb Al, excuse me, Turkey. That's TR, I think it's for Turkey. And its jihadists continue to bomb Al Manjir Al Asadiya. Uh, Lilian and Bernoa villages south of Ras Al, uh, Al Ain with artillery and air support today, uh, according to the SDF press. This is what you're seeing right here happening uh, there in that, that region of Syria there. Uh, and of course, this is the Kurdish women that are fighting to, uh, you know, to fighting back against the Turkish militia that they have inside the country of Syria. So... Why they smile about it, I don't know. I mean, I don't see how anybody can smile in a war unless there's really no return fire and that's all for show. Uh, you know, sometimes maybe they, you, you never know. Uh, videos are being done, though. This here, though, is not for show. Uh, this is uh, real fire going on over there. And, of course, they are uh, launching that uh, um, the, the rocket there, anti-tank missile there, uh, striking one of the Turkish military vehicles there in the region. So... It is a war zone once again, and it is not stopping whatsoever. Uh, in this one, in this footage right here, he was saying, as you can see, they are continuing to shoot uh, with heavy weapons. Um, and the SDF YPG and YPG J fighters, along with the locals, continue to defend their positions. You know, I, I will say one thing. You know what's really interesting to me? It's amazing how that we may have not have had very many forces up there with the Kurds, but what little bit we had there, the Turks wouldn't move because of being a NATO ally until Trump gave the order to move. But he is going back in, of course, to secure the natural resources. Hmm, interesting. That's where it stands right now, friends. I uh, just wanted to kind of update you on that. And I do want to say a, a very hearted, uh, grateful appreciation. I have many sources around the world. Um, uh, in fact, we got a new source coming out as well uh, that, uh, that we're going to be sharing some insights with you on uh, Bolivia uh, down in South America. In fact, let me just go to our maps here real quick. Uh, I, I do want to... Uh, get into this situation that is happening in South America um, because it is a great concern. We are certainly seeing, uh, oh wow, but all my flat earth friends will love that picture right there. Well, Google Maps gives it to you, so all right, it's not, not Steve. Uh, anyway, Bolivia right here. There is a major issue going on in Bolivia, and uh, unfortunately, I am finding that there are a lot of people out there reporting false narrative of what is actually happening. Uh, we have a couple of journalists uh, that are friends that uh, watch the broadcast here and I'm trying to get them on uh, get them on our broadcast here hopefully by Monday night the situation in Bolivia to bring to you what is really going on. Uh, there is a lot of fake news being reported about Bolivia and I'm going to give you a little example here in just one second. So <clears throat> let, me, let me take you now and I'll share with you some information here that I had received myself. This here is uh, one video. Now the sound quality is kind of poor, but I want to play for you just a little clip here. This is about the elections that are going on. I'm going to play that in just a moment for you, but I want to share with you uh, uh, Miranda one of the uh, friends of ours that actually shared this information with me said, I'm writing you desperately because I have no clue what to do. We are an American expat family who has lived in Bolivia for seven years. Now, she talks about uh, uh, Paul speaking and reporting on this, and she clearly says he got it completely wrong. He is, uh, he is spreading this, uh, the, uh, basically, a U.S.-based propaganda, and... Uh, she goes on to note that uh, 
uh, she said, which uh, can cause more problems than you know. People need to know the truth, basically the truth of what's really going on in Bolivia. This is the comment that I left on his video, and she said on there, this is ridiculous, I live in Bolivia, and that uh, propaganda piece you read off about him declaring himself a victor, he was the victor of the preliminary count. The rapid count showed he was the victor. There is nothing wrong with saying that he won the first round. The final count takes like four days, and in fact, it just now got done tonight. The U.S. and other nations are trying to take away Bolivia's sovereignty, uh, even though the majority vote was obviously in his favor. There is a racial divide, and they want to ignore the votes of the indigenous population. This government is not falling apart, uh, she emphatically wants uh, the people of the world to know at all. It's so strong here, it's insane, thanks to Evo. Now, uh, uh, she goes on to say, and, and Evo, I believe that is the, uh, yeah, here we go, Evo Morales, he is the one that won that first round there, and of course, uh, RT is, uh, is not taking the side that the United States has taken on this. Uh, they say, confirmed as a winner, Bolivia's Morales invites international community for election audit after opposition says vote was rigged. Sounds like to me, and even from what I'm getting from our sister here and our brother that uh, has contacted us, it's another case of overthrowing yet another nation. And I clearly, or, or let me put it this way, I really believe that we are dealing with another New World Order crisis on, on the verge here, collapsing yet another nation uh, that they do not have uh, under control that the Sanhedrin would love to be able to see get it under its own wings with its own leaders inside of there and not someone that they don't agree with. But anyway, Evo is, of course, this is the man right here. Evo, he is the one that has won that first round. Uh, says Bolivian socialist leader Evo Morales invited international community to audit the presidential election results as opposition cried fraud and burned ballots while Washington cast doubts on results. Bolivia's elections authority confirmed the final tally for the contentious vote on Friday, handing Morales his fourth presidential term. However, protesters continued around the country. A 24-hour pause in vote count earlier this week sparked allegations of tampering, which have brought tens of thousands of opposition activists in the streets to contest the outcome at times clashing with police. Again, it sounds like another CIA Mossad operation to overthrow another uh, nation that is not bowing down to the world New World Order agenda. So I, I really take issue with this myself. Since, she goes on to say, since he has been in power, he got us out of here. That was doing nothing but coke trafficking. In other words, the, first, the, the previous uh, leader of that nation was cocaine trafficker. Oh, wait till you see what's coming about those cocaine traffickers, drug runners, money laundering, thugs. Uh, oh, gosh. Same old, same old. If you want the whole story, I will send you videos. To, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, she goes on to talk about that. And then we're, tr we're, we're certainly trying to get our, our sister, our brother here on our program. Uh, but... Uh, very interesting information that she shared with us. She said, also said the Bolivian people are tired of having new governments that kept changing and no, no one knew what they were doing. The previous governments collapsed on themselves. This is why the people don't want him to leave. Please report the facts. You are reporting the same thing that, uh, excuse me, you're reporting, please report the facts. And I think this is where she was actually commenting on, uh, on Paul's channel there, what he was saying, she said the same thing that CNN, she said, Your report, you are reporting the same thing that CNN fake news is reporting. There are two vote counts, the preliminary and the final. He won the preliminary by 10 points and then said, said at a meeting he holds annually where the government gives money to some of the poorest indigenous populations. Why in the world is he not allowed uh, to say he won when he did. And yes, this was planned. The opposition Mesa held meetings encouraging the people to follow the plan. The plan was to do civil unrest first and then nationwide strike. Evo kicked out the CIA. DEA and country has grown ever since. And no, those countries are trying to get back in. Wow. 
I like the guy already. You kick out the CIA <laughs> and the DEA, he's got to be doing the right thing. That's the only way you want to survive. And if they can't survive, they're going to overthrow it. Listen, I know how that works. That's what they were doing back when I worked with them with Nicaragua, trying to overthrow Nicaragua and already trying to do it again. And, he, you know, listen, I have to say to my sister that wrote this, it's, it's the New World Order, sister. That's what it is. And, uh, and, and Paul, listen, brother, I, I have to tell you, you got to get on the right side of the fence of these things, brother. You got to start telling the people what's really true. Quit going with mainstream narrative. Get the facts. Know what the facts are and tell, our, tell the people, brother. Because, listen, one day we got to stand before Jesus Christ and give account. We really do. And I want to know that I did everything I could. I, I want to be able to look the Lord Jesus right in the eyes and say, Father, I did everything I knew to tell the people the truth. And when I was wrong, I let them know, I'm sorry, I'm wrong, and correct it. And I didn't mean to. You know, I want to know from my heart I told people the truth. I don't want it to be afraid because I've been threatened by some government organization, which I have, man, uh, to, to keep my mouth shut. You know? If you get if we're under that kind of a fear, then just don't just do something different then. You know, maybe only preach the gospel or something. Just stay away from this international arena if we can't say the truth. And uh, and, and but then again, uh, who knows? Maybe maybe the bro brother Paul really believes sincerely that he's saying the truth. I, I don't know. But anyway, uh, that was left though on his video about it. And when I saw this, of course, I, me knowing that part of the world and what goes on, I, I realized that what was being said is very true. So I wanted to make sure I got that information out to you guys as well. All kinds of evil going on in the world. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget to support the broadcast. Going to be doing a teaching. And I haven't forgot you guys on Patreon. I've still got a couple of videos I haven't uploaded yet over there. But with all the... Uh, you know, I mean, my wife said a little bit to you guys the other day. We're going through a lot, a lot of serious issues here in our family. And uh, whether or not it's under an attack or whatever, I have no idea. I, I'm not going to say that it's, a, it's an attack. I mean, we know that Satan comes against us like a flood, but God will raise up a standard against him. That's what he promised. That's what I believe. I'm going to stand on it. We're going to fight back. We're going to tell you the truth. We're going to bring the facts out regardless of the cost that everybody leave. We'll stand there and we'll preach the truth even if there's only one person left to preach to. But I am going to be speaking a message that the Lord blessed me with. Uh, uh, actually, it was just over an issue that came up recently there, but it just caused a massive revelation. Uh, in my heart there, because I know Yana had mentioned in the, our broadcast the other night, Stephen Yana chat, uh, saying that you got to study Judaism. Now, some people may not understand that. Yana's not trying to tell you to go and and uh, become a Jew like that. But what she's saying is actually something that our Lord Jesus told us to do, uh, but in a little bit different way. And I really went deep into this studying it out. It's going to also air on Hebrew Nation Radio, so I think it'll be a blessing to you um, what I'm going to be sharing with you. But what basically what Yana is saying is, you know, know your enemy. you got to know your enemy, especially like in a case of a war. You go into war, that's, the, that's what the generals do. They study the enemy to know what to expect from that enemy. Well, Jesus said the same thing. What did he say? Be what? Wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. Ooh, if you're going to be wise as serpents, you better know what the serpents believe, huh? Oh, wow, wow, that's an interesting thought right there. Not only did he, oh, my goodness, wait till you listen to that message. It's going to air on the Noon Institute, our YouTube channel there, uh, but it'll also probably air here on Israeli News Live, maybe tomorrow while I'll be working uh, with this stack of papers over here, putting this PowerPoint together for you. Uh, so, again more things. It's, it's just truth. I, I, I have no agenda, period. None. I tell you the truth. I tell you what I believe is right, the best I know from my heart. God is my judge. I don't lie to you. I try my sincerest to be as honest as I can with you guys because I do love you and I want you to know the truth. And I want to thank also, uh, I never have said this publicly, but I'll just say it like this. Many, many, many sources we have around the world, different countries, 
uh, different backgrounds. I mean, some of the some of the friends that I have, in fact, many of our sources, I could never name them. I just can't do it uh, for their safety. Uh, but I have colleagues, former colleagues, that I sit down and we talk privately about. Um, I think one of probably the only people I could actually say publicly, because he says things publicly, and that would be John Moore. He, you know, he does share some things with me uh, as well. But especially, though, my former colleagues and plus uh, intelligence uh, people that I know in many different countries around the world uh, that have shared, that share information with me, even just people that are in the know. Uh, I've got friends from Lebanon, and I'm talking about government officials uh, as well that reveal to me things that are going on. And that, in fact, that's another issue altogether. I haven't even got into that story as of yet. I, had, I sat down the other day with one of my sources there and we discussed in depth some things that were going on in Lebanon. Uh, and I do need to get to that story. That's a very serious story as well as going on. There's a lockdown going on inside the country of Lebanon right now. Um, and this person is a Christian uh, and related to uh, some of the top officials in Lebanon. But they said to me, they said, I asked them, I said, what do you, is it Hezbollah trying to overthrow the country? She said, no, it's not Hezbollah trying to overthrow the country. She said, but there's an internal uh, strike that's happening in the country and they're trying to overthrow the country right now. So they've done a lockdown. And she said to me, she said, even though I don't, I'm Christian, I don't agree with the Arabic uh, view. She said, if it wasn't for Hezbollah, she said, we would have already been overrun by Israel. I'll leave it at that. Anyway, blessings to you. Thank you, all the friends that I do have that are listening tonight. I do love you very sincerely, and I appreciate the information that you're willing to share with us that we can get to the rest of the world. God bless you, and good night.